Oh, Unleashed. One was called Unleashed. Oh, yeah. So, he said that it's just what, it took him like a few years to recover, you said? Yeah, it took, it took him a few years to recover uh, because the, the, um, what they were trying to get from him was uh, something, just what the media wanted, only just what the media wanted from him. Not from what he wanted to show, not from what he wanted to show the world, but, uh, as, as he knows the martial arts, but just what the you know what the media wanted from him. I suppose it's it's hard for him to say no because of the uh, you know that's his livelihood. I suppose that's his his way of uh, you know living, his family to feed his family and this and that. Um, but, yeah, I think I think uh, you know Jet Li has made a lot of movies in China. And he really didn't need to come to America because, you know, he's already famous over there. He already has a lot of money. But I think uh, when it comes to Hollywood, they're like, they'll give you like very few opportunities. Like he had to get rich and famous in China before even being considered in America. And then they give him like, okay, you know, all right, we're going to star you in this movie called Unleashed and it's going to go this way. And if it doesn't go this way, then we're, then we don't need you. So he's put in a predicament where it's like, well, I either make this movie or I don't make this movie. If I don't make this movie, then less people in America will even know about me. So then he's like, you know, all right, you know, fine, you know, let me just go ahead and make this movie. And then it just opens up people's eyes and, you know, more of like who Jet Li might be, you know. And then even though the movie's not representing him and his culture and what he believes in, um, it leads other people to recognize his other movies where he is representing the culture the way that it's supposed to be. You know, so if he has like 50 movies out there from China and then the only people in America know about him is because of Unleashed and then they're like, hey, you know what? This guy is pretty good. I like him. What other movies is he in? Then they'll be like, oh, there's 50 other movies that he's in but they're all in Chinese and then that gives the opportunity for the American that would have never even knew about Jet Li to be influenced by his work because he participated in that. Now, even though the movie was not a representative of who he is or his culture, to, in my eyes, it's not nearly as bad as going into a cage and beating people up. You know, it's just, it's just much lesser extent. But, you know, it is difficult though when you're in a position where you don't need to do that. Like, he doesn't need the money. He, he, he's already famous. He already has money. But then, to make the decision, do I do this movie even though it's not, even though it's con conflicting with my values and is not representing me and who I am? Like, that's a, tough, that's a tough decision to make. You know, because they are paying him money too. And then, then uh, Hollywood movies are known to be paid the most money out of all other movies. So, he might have to make, like, 30 Chinese movies to equate to one one movie from Unleashed. The amount of money that he makes from Unleashed. And it's tough to give up that money because Unleashed might be like, well, we'll give you $5 million to make this movie. But then in China, he might have had to make 30 movies to make $5 million, you know? So it's just a tough decision because it's like, here's pretty much like free money on the table, but then you got to sacrifice some of your inner values. And it's a tough decision. Um... But the difference with Jet Li is that he's not an American. He's not truly a Chinese American, so he doesn't have the ability to speak that well. So even though his, he's living the essence of the martial arts, he can't really teach the way that I'm teaching or the way that Bruce Lee was teaching because he's not, he doesn't have that language to be a part of him like that. You know, so um, that's the, diff the, the difficulty with Jet Li is though even though he's still living, even though he made a lot of movies, his influence is not nearly as impactful as the influence of the way Bruce Lee was. You know? Yeah. Um, I, I, I would have liked that if he, he was a director, producer, and actor of the films, but I don't think that you know, they don't give him that chance because of his, 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 you know, his age, Asian. Uh, I, I feel that you know, he doesn't get the opportunity to sort of uh, produce what he wants to produce um, in a way, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know where he's at now. I think he decided to retire from yeah. making martial art movies. He's sick now. He's got a disease. Oh, yeah? What kind he's of disease? Die, really? Um, 
Uh, you'll have to have a look on YouTube, but it's hyper, hyper something. Um, he's got deterioration of his whole uh, body, um, his skin, his hair. Um, it, it was said to that his whole nervous system was shut down because he was so like quick on screen and in. He was very, he was very uh, in person. He was a very like fast person, fast twitch fibered person. Uh, with all his wushu that he did, he was an Olympic champion in wushu. Um, and he did a lot of um, uh, physical, uh, physical, um, fast twitch stuff. So his body was quite like, you know, fast. So his body's like break, breaking down now from that. So instead of it being like that from when he was younger, um, now it's sort of, as he's got older, it's sort of developed uh, differently. He sort of got like b uh, bipolar. A bit like uh, John claude Van Damme is the same. He developed uh, bipolar. From, uh, from when he was younger, from all the uh, things that he was doing with his body, trying to push it to that higher level of, um, say, fast twitch muscles, um, it's, it's, become, it's developed that sort of uh, disease as such, he, he was saying. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's, that's uh, sad to hear, you know. Yeah. I'll look up on that and see what's going on with that. But, I mean, it is, it is sad. You know, to hear that, you know, yeah. I mean, I guess it's something to learn from too, because um, even you don't have to necessarily do competition fighting, but just like, you know, when you push yourself too hard doing things that your body is not ready for, I mean, I mean, the thing is, it's like, is you ask yourself, is it worth it? You know, I mean. You know he's in all these movies. He has fame, but then, if you have the, the 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 if you have the option of dying at fifty or eighty, like which option would you take? You know, would you rather live till eighty and not being all these films, or live till you're fifty and be in all these films? You know, I mean that's the type of decision that some people have to make. You know, and yeah, but I think for people that aren't even in that industry, it's good to learn what happened to their bodies through the stress that they put it through so then you don't put it through that same type of stress like me for example like why would i push myself so hard for what so i could die early for what you know it's like i'm not getting anything out of it you know just because you know just because i feel myself you know doing something like lifting a lot of weight and then now i hurt my back it's just stupid it's like you know you don't need to do all that you know it's like just, you just need to become liberated from these things because you know as you as you as you're gonna get older, you, you're not gonna be able to do the physical attributes, the, the feats that you do do, um, and then you just become liberated from them before that actually happens, um, because you are gonna get older and you're not you know and, and at that age, um, you're just trying to become liberated before it all happens, sort of things, and I think it just hit people, it hits people hard. Um, that's, that's what happens. Uh, John claude Van Damme, some of the things that he used to do that I've seen when he was younger, he used to do so many things. And he was, he, even till now, he's keeping himself in that physical fit condition. Um, but he actually got bipolar from there. He was taking uh, cocaine at one point and his life was going, you know, on a, a real down slope. Um, and I, I think it's to do with becoming liberated from it so that in the future, it doesn't hit you to say, you know, I used to do all these things, and I still want to do these things. Um, it's become liberated from it before that happens, sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a big that's a big part of the spiritual teachings too. Um, I think one of the biggest problems is when you put yourself of value only because of what you could do physically. Then you're kind of just like focused, honed in onto that, and that's all that you value within yourself, and that's all you've taught people to value you for. So they're only giving you attention because you could do these physical things. But once you can't do those things anymore, then they don't care about you. So you're basically teaching your audience to only value you because of that. And then you're basically reinforcing within yourself that you're of no worth unless you could do those physical things. And part of my work, the reason why majority of my videos is speaking is because I could I'll probably be able to speak until I die. So if you could, con yeah, if you could contribute to society through speaking and teaching or just expressing yourself verbally then that's going to be a lot more everlasting than just your physical you know it's not like i'm always like it's like the physical is just there is great but 
it's just like a an initial thing to just grasp people's attention to really listen to what you have to say or it doesn't have to be something you say it could be something that you write you know because Bruce Lee when he got physically hurt he started writing his teachings and because he started writing that's how he reached out to me but if he never got hurt he probably would have never wrote all the stuff that he wrote and then I still wouldn't even know much about Eastern philosophy because he didn't write about it you know and I think um, it's very powerful when when you could um, you know basically use like not not so much of your physical but more of your total being like your your mental and your spiritual um, as an overall benefit to your growth and just also to the people you know and and the physical yeah it will deteriorate but I think it's just important to know the difference between training with no ego and training with ego if you train with no ego then you're training for health and whatever you do physically is aimed towards uh you know living longer and enhancing your health but a lot of these people out there in the limelight in the spotlight they're training for ego and they're not really training for health and then you see them deteriorating pretty quick you know and and especially for us we're not making the type of money they're making so why are we training the way that they're training like if somebody gave you 10 million dollars to fight in a boxing ring so then you could live like 10 years um, less okay at least you're getting 10 million dollars but why are we going in the boxing ring fighting just as hard as they are and then we get absolutely nothing out of it and in addition we're gonna live 10 years less I mean it's just not it doesn't this is not a good deal you know so I think um, these people that a lot of people look up to they're not really being good role models for actual living and you know like I think it, it comes a time where people need to open up to learn from people that are just kind of like themselves you know like they're not super rich but they have this skill and this talent and this art to share that, that will help benefit your life because you know they're teaching you the right way to do it you know like not to hurt yourself but because it's not just about cage fighting but if you don't exercise the right way you could really damage yourself pretty bad you know um, like lifelong back pain, lifelong shoulder pains, I mean, trying to do a stunt that you don't know what you're doing, you could kill yourself, you know, um, there's just a lot of things that could go wrong uh, when you let this ego take control, and then now you're just doing all sorts of crazy things, you know, just to get attention or um, get recognition, make, make money, but it's like, what's the point of making all this money? And then you can't even enjoy it because you're about to die pretty soon, you know? Like, yeah. it's just, um, but you know, I know I gotta look up on that Jet Li thing. It's, it's sad to hear that. You know, it is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I seen it the other day and, and uh, yeah, I was, I was watching, I couldn't, you know, I, I felt like I wanted to reach out to him to say something. But, um, obviously because of the fame and money that he, 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 he's at now, you know, you can't even... Even if I tried to write a, a, a letter or something, you know, you don't know where it's going to end up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, I mean, just even a tribute video, you never know. He might come through it, but it could also bring awareness to his fans out there, too. And just, you know, because I didn't know, you know what I mean? Like, but I think it's just being able to learn from everybody, because even Bruce Lee you know, the decisions that he made, and who knows, you know, he died at 32, but, you know, could he have made better decisions of certain things? We don't know, you know. Jet Li, you know, you'd see him as a, as a really good role model, but, like, was he training, like, too too much, or was he, was his training just not good for him, you know, or certain decisions that he made, was it not good? Um, Jackie Chan doing all those stunts, was it good for him? I mean, I think... These um, these big name people, you know, you said Jean Claude Van Damme. I mean, they're there to learn from. You know, even Steven Seagal, he's famous. Like, learn from what happened to him. You know, like, like learn from these different people and how they live their lives and 
make better decisions in your own life. I mean, Tupac, you know, I learned from him, but it's like we want to live longer, but we, we want to make a difference, but we got to do it in the right way. You know, like Martin Luther King Jr., you know, learn from him. Malcolm X, learn from him. Like, these great leaders out there that did great things. But if they would have made... I think, one, I think one of the big problems is, Sifu, sorry to interrupt, one of the big problems is, is that a lot of people, uh, these great names, as you, as you say, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, people that have made the changes, Bruce Lee, um, and so on and so forth, uh, I mean, they can do 100 things right, but that one thing that they do wrong, everybody knows them for that one thing that they've done wrong, now that they, nobody wants to know them anymore. So them 100 things 